Today, I want to talk about how to quickly use just one tool, Google Search Console, which is completely free, that you can use to diagnose pretty much any type of technical SEO issue. So that's crawling, rendering, indexing, and even perhaps to some extent ranking. But the whole purpose of this is because a lot of people, a lot of SEOs, and in particular, a lot of agencies, they like to start off with a full technical SEO audit. And while that sounds good, and you know, I've had a lot of online debates about this is, yes, it's, it's nice to know every possible thing that is wrong with a website so that you can prioritize and stack rank them. But how long will that process take? And how useful is that going to be for the audience? So whether that's your client or your boss or your own website, how useful is that going to be? And there's two schools of thoughts, at least from my perspective, and that is, it's always useful. Like I cannot actually ethically or morally argue that it's not useful to know all the things that are preventing you from ranking crawl or being crawled or having content indexed because there's a rendering problem. I cannot conscionably say that it's not important to do so. But what I'm trying to say is that maybe there's a shortcut to pinpoint which areas of technical SEO you should prioritize. And that's why I'm making this video here today because you can quite literally, and the purpose of this video and this presentation essentially is that I want to show you how you can diagnose almost any traffic loss using only Google search console. Because at the end of the day, we want to be efficient. Like I don't want to be spending time doing a full audit when maybe 30% or even 60% of the stuff is not relevant. Like it will be great to tell a client or to know for yourself or a website that, hey, most of the crawling issues don't exist. Pat them back. Great stuff. But at the end of the day, it's about efficiency. It's being able to deliver value and to deliver that value quickly because uh, most clients, again, I'm speaking as someone who's work agency side and as a consultant, most clients come because something has gone wrong and they want you to figure out what has gone wrong and how to fix it. That essentially is your role. And hopefully that's why you're watching this video so that you can get to that answer quicker. And so without further ado, let's jump into how you can use Google Search Console, in particular, the settings tab, uh, which is often forgotten. But when you go into your GSE property, you scroll down to the bottom. Here it is. Click on settings. And assuming that you have the right permissions, then you'll see all this good stuff. But let's jump back into the presentation and see what uh, you're going to discover. I already rambled about this because, you know, look, I have my own technical SEO checklist. Like there's over, I don't even know how many there are. It's like over a hundred criterion using various tools, even eyeball tests to see uh, what could possibly be wrong. And, you know, I'm all for checklists. Like I love following a checklist because it means that you never forget or you never leave something that could be mission critical out. But to start from scratch to go, let's do a full audit, that just seems like a complete waste of time unless your client has asked for this exact thing. So coming back to this, you know, you can actually, I'll, I'll link to this PDF for you so that you can read it at your own time. But let's say your client comes to you and they're like saying, hey, Daniel, we have a problem. Our conversions are down, our sales are down. Maybe our traffic's down. Can you figure out what is wrong? We want you to solve it. And so what is the goal here? Well, the goal of this exercise to use just one tool, Google Search Console, is to quickly determine if traffic loss is due to one of four things, typically. It's either is search engine, specifically Google, having problem crawling the website or web pages? Does it crawl it effectively, but it can't render the content? Or maybe it can crawl and render, but there's something preventing it from indexing that content. And then maybe it's a ranking issue, or maybe even it's a content quality issue. And so the whole point of this exercise, again, is to quickly go, it's not this, it's not this, maybe it's this, or it's definitely this, so that then perhaps you can jump into, you know, a big beast of a checklist like this and go, okay, it's probably based on our initial findings and indexing related problems. So then you can go through all these things if you want, and then that will give you a very structured and concrete and data-driven way of saying, 
this is what's wrong. This is how we found it. And this is how you can then resolve it. Was that at the end of the day is more important. You found the problem. Great. How do you fix it? That's where you as an, as someone who works in an agency or someone who's a consultant or a freelancer or even in-house, that's where your value comes in. All right. So let's jump to the first thing. And I believe there are like nine or 10 things that we're going to go through. And so the first thing is check crawl stats for any anomalies in the web host status. And so this is an eyeball test. So how do we do this? So as I mentioned previously, you jump into your GSE profile, you go on the left hand side menu, navigation menu, and you come down to settings. And whereas crawl stats, assuming you have the right access and this is the right domain level property i don't believe this works for a subfolder like let's just prove it let's go to this one i'm pretty sure there is no cross yeah, we can't even access on there is settings but as it says here google search console says only available in root level properties which makes sense so let's go back to wedgeshed.com.au jump into the settings tab then go to crawl stats and what are we trying to find we're trying to see if there has been any server downtime, which could explain why traffic's down, could explain why some of your pages have dropped out of the index. And this is a very quick eyeball test to go, has anything gone wrong that could explain why traffic has come down? And so what we're looking for is this particular bar here. And I see a green tick, which means it's good for the host status and Google gives us an explanation of what this is. And that is host status summarizes your general availability in the last 90 days. So it's not for a long timeline. It's only for the last 90 days. So if you're doing an audit for something that's been happening for a while, this won't give you a, the full picture, but at least give you in the last three months or so, if the web host has had any issues. So if any availability issues affect your site in the last 90 days or last week, you will see a warning. So in this instance for Wedshed, it has had no problems in the last 90 days. And you can feel free to click through into this, into this host status tab. And it's just repeating that. So apparently there was, well, acceptable fail rate. I guess that also means 0% was there has been nothing wrong here, nothing wrong with the DNS, nothing wrong with the server itself. So looking, judging by that, if we're looking for crawl anomalies in the host status, we can safely say for this example, uh, there are absolutely no issues with this. So it's not a web host issue at all. Okay, so you made it this far into the video. And that tells me, at least this content is not bad. So maybe it's time that you can do me two little favors. The first is make sure you watch until the very end, not because I gatekeep the good stuff till the very end of the video for engagement purposes. No, it's rather from the beginning to the end, I tell a hopefully a very cohesive story and you'll miss out if you don't watch until the very end. Plus, I believe it is a strong signal for the YouTube algorithm that tells it that this content is good and therefore selfishly it helps me get in front of people just like you who want help with their digital marketing or seo now the second thing that can help me with costs you nothing all you need to do is hit that like button you know that thumbs up button do that for me right now so that you don't forget and again this sends a strong message to youtube that this content is good and again this is why i create this content so it can reach more people at a scalable way so thank you Thank you for watching this far and I return you back to your regular programming. All right, number two, second thing that we're gonna check. Check crawl stats again for evidence of increasing trend of 300 or 400 HTTP response codes. Why do we wanna do this? Well, because if we do see a substantial increase in either 301s, 302s and 404s or any other 400 type status codes, this may indicate URL path changes and a sharp increase in the last 90 days is a strong hint that something has gone wrong. So maybe a whole bunch of URLs have changed. Maybe there's been a site migration that your client has failed to tell you about. These are things that we're looking for. And again, if you were going through a checklist, it would take you a very long time to get to that. And so this again is a shortcut to pinpoint Maybe there's a change in URLs that has caused this. Let's see if this actually exists. So how do we do this? We go back into crawl stats 
and we're looking by response type. So you have your 200s and every website in every property is going to be different depending on how Google has crawled and what it has found. And so for this example that I'm showing here, there's 68% are 200s, 16%, 14%. So we add actually three or fours, three or ones and three or twos. That is, oh, I'm doing math live. That I believe is 30% and that is just less than. So around 30% of all crawled URIs or URLs uh, in the last 90 days have been a 3xx status code. So that tells us something that there are a lot of types of redirects in place. In terms of 404s, not many, less than 1%. And since there are nine, let's scroll through and be thorough. Most of these don't matter. So if we're coming back to this, what is it trying to say? Is there a sharp increase? So not only are we looking at percentages, I'm actually instructing you to look at the spark line to see if there's a trend. And so if we're looking at 304s, there's a whole bunch of them. So it looks like there is a spike, but it falls down and it's on a downward trend. So that's good. 304 seems to be okay. But again, you can click into it. And I believe, yes, here we go. We can see a better line graph and you can make it a judgment call. This to me looks like it is on a very slight incline. So that tells me, okay, there's, there's something going on in terms of redirects. Maybe there's a whole bunch being redirected. It could be the right thing. Maybe it's unplanned. Maybe it is planned, but at least this gives you an idea of, okay, for wedgeshare.com.au, in terms of redirects, I'm seeing a very small but gradual increase in them. Maybe that warrants a further investigation, especially if you would export these and you can only get a thousand, but at least there's 989 export these and then maybe do a VLOOKUP or whatever you want to do to see, are these the pages that are important? Are these the pages that you believe or the client has said that they've seen less traffic to? And of course you can confirm this or validate this in your analytics tool of choice. All right, so that is number two. What's the third thing that we can check in Google Search Console? Well, again, in Crawl Stats, we're looking for evidence that existing and newly published URLs are being crawled. Okay, so what does this mean and why? So a downward trend in refresh and discovery crawls may indicate a larger problem that warrants further investigation. So where are we going to find this in stats crawls? Let's scroll down and I believe here it is. It's the by purpose window or frame or pane in crawl stats and here I only have two and it's refresh and discovery. So what are we looking for? A downward trend in refresh and discovery crawls. Are we seeing that here? No, I'm saying I'm seeing refresh is pretty okay. In fact, it is revisiting lots of URLs and it's somewhat on a flat trajectory. So I'm not too concerned there. And then if we look for discovery, now discovery in this instance refers to newly published URLs. And so this is the search engine. Google specifically in this case is finding new content. And how is that looking for the last 90 days for this website? I would say, look, if, again, you draw a line, looks like it kind of slowed down in terms of looking for new content during November till, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it's increased again. So as long as that line is not fully going down, I'm okay with that. So I can say that's a pass. So it, it appears as though it's not, again, a discovery or refresh. So it's not a crawling issue. And that's definitely something I can say for this particular website that crawling doesn't appear to be an issue because Google is happily finding old existing content and it's happily discovering new content, although it, you know, goes up and down throughout the days. Okay. What's the fourth thing we can check. We are going to look for evidence of increased page resource load. So this typically refers to maybe bloated code could be CSS. Typically it's JavaScript because JavaScript is the devil. Not really, but essentially what we're looking for is over here in by Google bot type. This tells us how much of that front end is requiring uh, intensive load. And so here it's 13%, which isn't terrible. It's not a lot. Um, and it's definitely not on the incline. 
So if we zoom in, we can see it's, it's okay. And so we can call that it's probably not a rendering problem at all. So number five, let's confirm when clicks began declining. So this is, we're jumping out of crawl stats, we're jumping out of settings, we're going into the usual panel of Google Search Console, and we're essentially just looking for across a long timeline to validate the client's uh, notes or commentary and validating when did traffic actually start declining. Now remember, this is GAC, it's very different to Google An Analytics, it's very different to other analytical tools because this only measures clicks, again, it's sampled, it's sampled clicks that it got from Google SERP. So it ignores all other types of search engine traffic. It ignores all other channels of user acquisition. This is only specific to Google itself. And you can do the same for Bing, right? You can go into Bing Web Master Tools and if you get some traffic from Bing, it also, you know, you should repeat the same process. It's a little bit different, but you can repeat the same process in Bing Webmaster Tools, especially, let's say, for example, the client's website gets more visibility in Bing than Google because of geographical reasons. And so here in this example, uh, we can see across a 16 month timeline, where exactly did traffic start falling? And we can see it's around here, probably, I would say, December of 2022. Now we jump into Wedgehead. What would that look like? If we go into search results and we pull this into 16 months, is there a traffic drop? And if so, when? Okay, so this is probably, not probably, this is definitely seasonal. December, Christmas, New Year, and then it spikes. And so it follows a similar trajectory. Now, this is one of the problems or limitations of Google Search Console is that you can only get the last 16 months. And that's why it's good to connect your GSC data to BigQuery so that you use that as a data warehouse. You can dump a lot of years of information there so that you just have more data. Because right now, I, I can only see 16 months. And this tells me, yes, there's a seasonal component to it, but overall, looks like interest wanes off. But again, I don't have enough of a timeline to go, is traffic dropping? But yes, across the year, there is a general trend that we can say, yes, traffic drops, and then you could go look into it. But is that the real problem? Probably not. All right, number six, compare total impressions versus average positions. Well, this will give you, well, this has helped you to understand if the loss in traffic is likely due to lost keyword rankings or a decline in overall search demand. If it's the former, so if it lost keyword rankings, this will inform your course of action. There's one thing that this cannot tell you, and that is even if your keyword rankings, your average keyword rankings in GSE did not drop as per this criterion, you can still lose traffic. And this is the nature of Google SERPs, right? Because Google will put its own widgets and favor its own widgets above all other organic listings. So you have, if it's a competitive query, you have four sponsored listings or results. So there are your Google ads. Then if there's a local component to it, there's gonna be a big map pack. Within the map pack, there's probably even one sponsored ad in there, up to two. And then maybe in some really rare but really annoying circumstances, you won't even see the first organic result. You'll get people also ask. And then, and that's like six scrolls down. Now you're finally into the first organic ranking. So this is a limitation of the In all that attention and moved it up towards the top of the fold. And there is very little that you can do about it. All right, number seven, do submitted sitemaps have any errors? Uh, if there are no, <laughs> obviously, if, there, if you go into the property and no sitemaps have been added, maybe you should add one. Now, the caveat to this is if it's a tiny website, if it has like 10, 50 pages, you don't need to have a sitemap. But anything more than 10 pages or even eight pages, in my opinion, I would add a sitemap because it's easy to do. It's not going to harm it. It's not going to harm anything. It's not going to cost you anything. It just adds to the efficiency and 
That's why I am a big advocate of having clean sitemaps. And what you'll see is what you're looking for are errors. So if we come across to Wedgehead again, jump into sitemaps tab, they have one index sitemap, so one master sitemap, and that has been submitted. It has been crawled, processed successfully. So it's not this, so we can move on. See how quick some of these checks should be. It's an eyeball test using data, using first-hand data, and you're using that to try and remove. So you, you, you have a whole bunch of hypotheses, right? It's either crawling, rendering, indexing, or, uh, or ranking, which could be related to content quality. And you're trying to discard uh, certain factors or variables away so that you can focus on one to two things that are the most probable causes of traffic loss or conversion loss. So moving on to number eight, have any important URLs been added to the removals tool? Because this can happen. Look, I, I don't know who actually still goes into, like I have, I have in the past put URLs into the removal tool because we needed that URL gone because for legal reasons, we couldn't uh, still have a old promotion discoverable on uh, Google SERPs. And that's why I have put it in there. But uh, let's see, because I believe it's still here. Um, removal tool, okay, it's here now. It's in the indexing tab and there are none here, none here, none here. So this is all good. But if you do see one or more URLs in this, uh, look into it especially if those are the important URLs, because you do not want important URLs put into here. All right, number nine, has a manual action or penalty, a Google penalty, been applied to the website? It's rare these days to see these here, but if we come down to here, to security and manual actions, and you know, there's none going to be here, but what you're looking for is the being green, a big green tick. But again, here's a caveat of this is that remember how I said you won't see manual penalties applied more often. These days you'll lose traffic, not because of a penalty. You are going to lose traffic because Google, as I mentioned earlier, has probably placed its own widgets above you or your content's not good enough. And that's not a penalty. It's just that you are removed or you are so far down in the SERPs that no one's going to come across you. And so that is not a manual action. That is just the SERPs doing its thing. All right, number 10. Do you see a significant decrease in indexed pages? All right, so this is where having one or more sitemaps submitted and processed in Google Search Console helps you because if we jump into the indexing pages tab in GSC, right, you will see typically two of these. So it's either not, not indexed or indexed, but this is everything. This is all known pages. And so this is why I like having your own sitemap, even by subfolder, by geo, by whatever you want. And this is a good way of getting into the nitty gritty really quickly to see what URLs or what percentage of URLs have been indexed and identify really quickly uh, any commonalities between those that have not been indexed. So what are we looking for here? Do you see a significant decrease in indexed pages? So let's first of all, look at all known pages. Click away that and then you'll just see this as a column graph. This looks very constant. So no decrease at all definitely no sharp decrease. And again, this is for all pages that Google is aware of. Remember when we went into crawl stats and refresh and discovery, this is what it refers to. Now, if we look at all submitted pages, which is going to be that sitemap index, again, very constant. So we can safely say there is absolutely no indexing problem for wedgehead.com.au, which is great news for them. So that is not an issue for them. But for this instance, when I was looking at this particular client, you could see there is a substantial drop from here to here, then to here, then it kind of balances out here. We're trying to figure out, was this intended or not? And that's where that further investigation uh, will tell you whether or not that was planned. And if so, that's okay. 
unplanned, okay, why and do we need to rectify it? And is that the root cause or one of the contributing factors, or at least a significant contributing factor to this loss in conversions and or organic traffic? All right, number 11. Is there a trend of increasing not index URL? So we're in the same tab here in page indexing. And, and, and so we're looking at the not index, so which is the gray bar. And we're seeing, is there a sharp uptick, I believe? Yes, increasing. So this is decreasing, which is good. And over here, it's also relatively stable. But we go all known pages, click away the indexed. Is this increasing? sometimes and again so we want to investigate why and that's what this would warrant right if if there's a trend of increasing not index urls this means that or well a significant number of new pages or even existing pages are either not getting indexed or they're dropping out of the index and that is not good and so if you do see that like if we don't see this here on the screen what you would do is scroll down and look for the reasons why those pages aren't getting indexed. And again, if you see that increase, then you want to validate it with which of these have that correlating or corresponding spark trend line. So you can go, oh, it's probably that. And usually, not being indexed or dropping out of the index so that you can relay this information and a course of action to uh, your client. All right, moving on to number 12. Is there an increasing trend of crawled, currently not indexed URLs? So that's what I just mentioned here. And that is over here. You can look at the spark line and of course, click into it. And then you can see a better representation in terms of visualization for you. I can see there is an increase of these, but it also there was a decrease. So there could be something happening here. But given that there is no indexing issue, does this warrant uh, further investigation? It may, it depends on what the problem is. So moving on, we've done crawled, currently not indexed. Is there, number 13 now, is there an increasing trend of blocked by robots TXT URLs? So this again, we're still in the page indexing tab within GSC. You're looking specifically at only not indexed you can be in all known or you can be all submitted pages or you can be in the sitemap view it doesn't matter what we're looking for is blocked by robots txt at least not for urls in the sitemap and because this site i know runs on i believe the backend cms of wordpress this makes sense because if you use like yoast or rank math if you were to delete a page or 404 a page or 301 a page it won't be in the sitemap and it shouldn't be blocked in the robots txt so let's go all known pages blocked by robots txt it's not here so definitely not an issue here but for some sites you may see it here so in this example you can see that thirteen thousand urls are being currently blocked by tx robots txt and this could be an issue something to investigate again was this planned was it not planned try and get to the uh, root cause of it so that you can make a recommendation or at least a a data driven recommendation on why the client is seeing what they're seeing on the website in terms of conversions and traffic and you can relate this to a technical seo issue and again once you've done that you, you jump into here and then you further investigate all the things that could contribute to it so that you can pinpoint exactly three or four things that need to be rectified right now as a high priority to uh, correct what they're seeing on their website. All right, number 14, find out what types of queries and pages have been affected by using the date compare toggle sort in descending order. So this is, this is not as quick and uh, I would rather you actually export or import the data into Looker Studio because you'll have more filters and the UX is a lot easier to use, but uh, I wouldn't call this a quick thing to check, but you can definitely do so by comparing, uh, because remember in one of the earlier things, we looked for when the traffic dipped, right? So over here, across the 16 months, we can say traffic dipped here. So you wanna compare this period 
to maybe the previous same period and go, what are the pages that saw the biggest drop in clicks and impressions and average rank and try to figure out what, then you can export what those are and then you can analyze those in terms of priorities, how they relate to the conversions or the overall contributing traffic that those pages have to the overall website. And once you have done all these 14 things, then yes, as I have mentioned many times now in this video, it's time to jump into the actual checklist or maybe you have one of your own and pinpoint which thing or things are going to be uh, the biggest contributing factors to it. Cool. And so that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about in terms of how to quickly diagnose for technical SEO issues. And this will usually be either crawling, rendering, indexing, or ranking. And now when it comes to ranking, there are multiple factors that come into it. And that's why in the uh, spreadsheet that I have, which is the technical SEO checklist, uh, there is quite a few of ranking related criteria on there's even international SEO one for those of you who may be looking at those type of websites, but ranking, there are 18 criteria to choose from, but you know, the whole idea of this exercise is to quickly identify which types of technical SEO pillars you could say is contributing to the problem that you're seeing so that you can better allocate your time and resources, or at least make the recommendation to your client, how they should spend their resources in identifying and validating and correcting for these issues. All right, folks, thanks for watching to the very end. I'm Daniel K. Chung, and it's been a pleasure having you along the journey here. Don't forget to watch maybe here, or here. And remember, if you like this content, give me a good big thumbs up so it helps it reach other people. Now, until next time, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next post.